Good morning, my friends. This is Tara Jarvis with Kefi Coaching, and I come to you live on Tuesdays for Transformation Tuesday. And I always look forward to this, and it's usually what's coming up for me and what's top of mind. So given that it's the Tuesday after Thanksgiving, and I hope everybody had a wonderful, fantastic uh, Thanksgiving holiday weekend here in the States, for sure. Uh, doing whatever it is that you enjoy doing when you get together on that weekend. Uh, but now it's Tuesday after, and if you're like me, you're considering, you know, kind of health and those kinds of things. And now tomorrow is going to be the 1st of December, the last month of calendar year 2021. Uh, depending on if you're getting ready for 2022 already, you might be gearing up for some things. But what I find fascinating is what I'm kind of attracted to a topic, which I am always thinking about health, uh, but things, um, and it is one of the six domains of life that I work with my clients on. So health, uh, work, wealth, lifestyle, uh, relationships, and play. Um, health is the one that really, if you don't have your health, th the rest are going to not really matter very much. Um, having been a caregiver for my husband during his cancer crisis, um, you become very, very clear that that's the top priority. So what is it about health that causes it not to be a, um, not even, not the top priority, not even kind of in the <clears throat> top suite of priorities that you would have? So a couple things have happened um, as I've been thinking about this for myself and looking at what new actions, uh, what actions do I want to keep, stop, or, uh, or add? And, um, so, and, and then I listen to the sounds of things that are coming to me. So I've mentioned before that I, my daily reading includes the, uh, Simple Abundance book by Sarah Branagh. And, um, one of the days this month, uh, the quote was the first wealth is health. And that was by Ralph Waldo Emerson. And shortly after that, I'm working with a productivity coach, Amber De La Garza, and I'm working through one of her master classes on self, and there was a section called Health is Wealth. And she had a guest uh, colleague there, her name's Courtly Townley, who has a, uh, a program about health. And um, very fascinating program. But she also has a podcast that I started listening to briefly called Grace and Grit Podcast. And she has an interesting story because she started as a dancer and then got into fitness training. And then what she noticed is that people were seeking her out as a fitness coach, but they weren't getting any more fit. And so she has a really good uh, view at it. But in that, in that masterclass that I did, she asked two really powerful questions that I'm going to pose to you right now. Um, when have you ever sacrificed your health for your work? And if I was honest, I'd have to say never. There's always a work deadline that stops me from going out for a walk or uh, stressing out and grabbing a cocktail to calm down or a coffee to get spiked up or whatever. There was always some, so it is always. And then the other question was, when have you sacrificed work for your health? And I'd have to say the only times I ever do that is when I'm so sick that I can't work. I'm either in bed or I'm on the couch or something has caused me to make my health a priority. And I don't think that that's what I want to do anymore. <clears throat> and so I know I've talked about the importance of hydrating, but I wasn't taking actions consistent enough to log my water or log enough water or replace coffee with water. I, I, I mean, I wasn't taking the action, so I knew that. And I am still not sticking to a nighttime routine that will allow me to get a regular consistent amount of sleep and not get wake up and be raring to go again and expecting my body to do almost inhuman things or unhuman things. I have so much focus on what I'm eating and food plans and food choices, which I know I don't make bad choices all the time very often, but they're not consistent choices, but that's where my focus is, is on food and exercise. And in reality, these other elements of health, whether it be hydrate or sleeping or moving and stretching, are probably as fundamental and easier to adhere to and get some wins and get some momentums. And maybe if I was more successful with my hydration and getting better sleep, I might be less fatigued and make better choices around what I was going to do, what I was going to choose to eat. 
Well, this all led me to um, Tom Brady. And, you know, our mentors and our coaches don't have to be older than us. And clearly, uh, you know, he's in his mid-40s. I can't quite tell. I think he's going to be 43 or 44 this year. And he's played in the NFL longer than anybody. And not only that, he plays as a vital starting quarterback. So whether you're a football fan or whether you're a Patriots fan or a Buccaneers fan, doesn't matter. I'm a, I'm a Brady fan wherever he goes because I know what this guy has really figured some things out here. And, and what might that be? And I was fascinated by uh, his program, and not only from a business owner program. So he's worked with his coach. He has this thing called TB12, which is 12 steps to lifestyle fitness, really, although it can be for elite athletes or it can just be for anybody. Um, and he calls it the TB12 method. It's pretty easy read. It's very well written. I haven't been able to put it down. And... Uh, what was fascinating to me about it is uh, this notion of what he calls pliability. And um, I had a 12-month stretching program that I was in, and I still wouldn't do the stretching at home. And I talk about doing yoga for stretching, and I talk about other kinds of stretching. I still don't do it. And yet, he says, this, as you age, your muscles become less pliable, and so you're more prone to injury if your muscles aren't conditioned enough to, um, to function and protect your bones and your joints and allow your ligaments and tendons to do what they want because you have so much, so much kind of almost atrophy in the bigger muscles that it's pulling and everything on all the other places. So if you have back pain or knee pain or elbow pain or shoulder pain or whatever it is, how much of it might not be because your muscles your, uh, that are designed to hold your structure are not less pliable. And so, you know, I talk about adding stretching to my morning routine, but am I doing it? No, but what I got from reading about this is that this actually could be the most important thing that I did. And if I ever did anything, if I'm gonna make and statements out of it, I'm gonna hydrate and sleep and stretch and eat healthy and exercise, I'm thinking the stretching one is gonna be key. Now, why that's really relevant uh, to me right now is I'm a golfer, made no secrets about being a golfer. And on November 6th, I was playing with some friends, my sister actually, and I slipped and fell. And I, it was a big fall. I, I, my, I have new golf shoes on, I'm thinking maybe I need to replace these spikes, but it was also damp. There was loose grass on the ground. My ball was above my feet, and when I went to swing, my both my feet came out from underneath me, landed straight on my butt, broke my fall with my left hand. My sister's laughing. It wasn't really funny. Uh, she goes, well, I guess you're not so old that I have to worry about whether you hurt yourself or not. And oh, by the way, you're, you hit the ball, and it's still in play, and my right hand still had my golf club in it. But I, I was stiff. You know, you kind of like, you know, if you get in an accident, a car accident or something, and you, you tense up. I'm sure my body had a physiological reaction to falling. Um, but then it happened again. And on Sunday the 21st, I was playing with some friends and I'm walking down off the tee box and I'm telling everybody, I go, you guys, um, be careful, it's really slippery here. And I put my foot on a wood step and my foot came completely out from underneath me. I landed on my foot, completely all my weight down on my quad, which I'm surprised I didn't crack a knee. And then I, my hand was on my right hand this time. So the only repercussion is I have a bruise on my thumb. And falling and hurting myself beyond repair is one of my biggest fears. And yet I've avoided anything serious happening uh, from these two falls. And I'm, I'm saying that something is right, but I need to be more focused on what Tom calls prehab, not rehab and icing and getting injured. So, you know, the universe works in threes. There's, a, there's something else coming for me, and I'm going to make sure that it's not the worst thing that ever happened. And I'm going to do this pliability stuff. I'm gonna, I'm, I've had trainers tell me, you need to roll. You need to use the roller. Mm, not interested. I'm beginning to see that as we age, and specifically as I age, if I want to continue to not be taken out by a fall or a trip, um, I need to make sure that my muscles are functioning um, completely as possible. Um, 
And this pliability notion, uh, I have a lot of muscle. I've been very athletic my whole life. I felt it. And he had an analogy in the reading that I did about hydration. It'd be like going into a butcher store and seeing a piece of really prime beef hanging on a rack compared to beef jerky. And as you age, your muscles are getting dried out and tense and they aren't gonna be able to function as long as you need them to do. So what is he, 44, starting quarterback for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers? He spends most of his time on this pliability and he does other things obviously around strength and conditioning, but the priority is this conditioning of these muscles and getting them ready. Morning, Kelly, thanks for Thanks for joining me today and thanks for commenting as well. I mean, I'm just, my mind's blown. I mean, mic drop. I mean, the stretching part is the most important thing and uh, made some changes about drinking water um, today for sure. I'm logging it. Um, I've ordered uh, a couple of different rolling and stretching devices. It's definitely going to the top of the list in my morning routine and in my nighttime routine. Because I believe that as I feel more conditioned and my muscles, I don't know, I just, I still have a fear of falling and slipping and it can happen. And it's probably one of the leading causes of accidents. And I'm not talking about in the NFL, I'm talking about just going about doing regular business. And although golf, a lot of people might not be able to play golf, I still am and I want to be able to play it well into my 90s. And uh, that's going to require a skeletal and um, muscular structure that's going to allow me to be able to do that. So I really encourage you, um, if you're interested, check out this book. Like I say, it's, an, it's a complete um, soup to nuts hymnal. It's, it's very well written. It's an easy read. Um, I read a lot of subjects in this area, but for some reason it really got through to me. And combined with my own circumstances, now it's about managing them. So getting better cleats on my, spot, on my golf shoes, probably longer. Uh, continuing to be really careful and just making sure that I'm, you know, in the best shape that I can be so that I can play a game, even like golf. So um, with that, I just really want to uh, remind everybody that health is wealth and the first wealth is health. And to really look at how often you sacrifice your health, and that's all aspects of your health, not just physical. It's spiritual, mental, emotional uh, it's everything regarding how healthy you are and how often you prioritize it, how often you make that the priority. And it was an interesting thing that um, Courtney also mentioned. She said, you know, we get so fixated on the things that our body's not able to do that we don't all acknowledge and even express gratitude for what our body does do. If you look at all the things, the body is in a miraculous uh, it's just a miracle. It's a miracle. And to not acknowledge how our systems work, our heartbeats, or how we digest food or whatever, um, we focus on, you know, my weight's not ideal, or I have a bad back, or we focus on the things that the body's not doing in the absence of really acknowledging and appreciating and expressing gratitude for all the things that your body does do. So uh, with that, I'm going to, you know, add that to the to the list of all the things that you could be grateful for. Cuz I'm going to tell you, when you don't have it, when you don't have it. I'm not saying it's going to be too late, but it's going to be a lot harder to put it back uh the way you want it. So it's now about prehab as Tom Brady would say, doing the things you need to do to prevent injury, not be subject to I'll just ice it and take some ibuprofen. No, get yourself as uh, in good a shape as you possibly can. So uh, with that, I'm going to call it a wrap. Uh, this is Tira Jarvis with Kefi Coaching. This is Transformation Tuesday. Thanks for joining me this morning. Thanks for being here, Karen. Um, I'm just going to um, let you know that I do have some free resources on my website. If you're interested, go to tirajarvis.com. And if you're interested in talking to me more about this or any other topic, I'm happy to have a discovery call with you, get connected, and see if I can help you. And if I can't, um, I'll let you know. I mean, I've got tons of resources. I'm happy to help you. I just really want everybody to live their best life and uh, be able to do that in all aspects of their life. And uh, with that, I'm going to say goodbye. Have an amazing Tuesday. Take care. Thanks again, Kelly and Karen. Appreciate it. Bye-bye.